correctly? She says the lead, she has diabetes, and she has a lead. Oh, she is, okay. Then we have Ms. Sandra Maldonado Robert. <laughs> Good evening, Sandra on the Ross, 691 Orion Compass Court, 1-3-3-8-1-0. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, first of all, and to say a few words in reference to priorities of our budget. I realize you're doing what you feel is the best you can at this point, but keep in mind there are things that we can always try and find later on and look through again and prioritize as needed. So with that in mind, um, I know one of the big priorities, the Legislature has, at this point in time, its technology. We've even heard it said tonight that they want to get to 75% here, even though I believe the mandate is only 50% um, by that deadline. I, I'm all for technology, don't get me wrong. I'm a teacher myself, but some of the county was formerly teaching Orange County for <coughs> over five years and overall for 17 years. Um, but at the heart of education is not your technology. It's the teacher, not one teacher that I know of, including myself, has ever gotten an email, email, a phone call, a letter, or anything thanking them for the technology that they were able to use in their classroom that helped them get a good in their life. It was for the teachers that were a part of their lives, the individuals that made that contact, the trust, and helped inspire them to go on to whatever it is that they do in life. So again, while I'm all for prioritizing technology and use of technology in the classroom, please continue to make the teachers the priority and focus of our funding and not just the technology. The mandate say 50%, while I say great, if we had to go above that, if not, let's make the priority the teachers before the technology. That's the important part, and we all know that, and I'm sure as individuals yourself, you're not gonna take back on some book that you read as the best thing for your education. It's gonna be a teacher, a person within your life that helped get you to that point, not that particular thing. And well, like I said, we didn't have that technology. Again, it's just not the same type of thing. We're not going to think about that book or anything like that. Remember the people, those are the priority, not just the technology. And the technology is great, and teachers appreciate it, and would love to have as much as they can. But again, remember, it's the people in their lives that make a big difference. So thank you, and keep that as a priority for your budget. Thank you, Ms. Uh, next, we have Cassandra Hatton. Now, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. I would like to read a letter from one of my CTA members um, who could not be here tonight because the son had a doctor's appointment. Can I start with your address? Oh, sorry. Um, 2423 South Conway Road, um, apartment 2305, or in Orlando, Florida, 32812. Dear school board members, Today we are hoping as a body of teachers that you grant us a 3% raise in our salaries in addition to what Governor Scott has already promised. Teachers understand that there are many things that are required of us that are done outside the boundaries of the school day. These are things that we do not expect to get paid for. Unfortunately, this is normal for a teacher. However, within the past year, it is obvious that our already full plates have quadrupled in size. There seems to be more to do before and after school than during school. We are tired, pressured, and stressed out, and it is only the fourth week of school. Here are some specific examples of how my plate is overflowing. Over the past several weekends, I have done nothing but lesson planning, grading papers, and horizontal strategies all day long. Over the past several weeks, it seems like our planning time has been eaten up by meeting after meeting. We are still trying to figure out all the technology that has been thrown at us, and we have not had the time or the true training that we need in order to use this, use this technology properly. It's very complicated. On Friday afternoon, I worked from 2.45 until 5 p.m. in the afternoon on lesson plans for just this week. That is two hours and 15 minutes. And the 2.45 PLC meetings, 2.45 minute um, PLC meetings we had discussing lesson plans and the 30 minutes that it took to write out the scale, learning goal, and essential question on the common board and you get a grand total of four hours and 15 minutes to have what is required of me for lesson plans. On Sunday, I missed church because I was writing seven sets of papers, 19 kids in my class, thinking about my solid graphs, scales, strategies, reflections, and studying my brand new reading and math. I find that it is a very hard thing for us as teachers to not be able to afford to pay our bills. I am a single parent. I have a daughter in college, and I have one in fourth grade. I have been employed with OCPS for over nine years. And in that time, my salary has only increased $4,000.
It is, it's hard for us. I spend more money out of my pocket than I bring in. We are only asking that you fund what you value. If you truly value teachers, there is money there in the budget, then you need to show us that you value us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Al. All right, we next have Ms. Wendy Doramal, and then after her will be Clinton Anderson, Philip Roman, Steve Fallon, and Doug Head. Ms. Doramal, Okay, <laughs> Wendy Dormal, 2914 Golden View Lane, Orlando, Florida, 32812. Okay, I'm a teacher at Timber Creek High School. Tonight I want to address the ever growing problem of wage theft of teachers. Over the years, the state, the district, and school leaders have heaped more mandated work on teachers. At the same time, schools have stolen teachers' paid planning time for mandated meetings or professional development. While teachers' workloads have increased significantly and unpaid working hours have been added to our plates, no additional pay is offered for the hours that we work beyond the school day. OCPS teacher salary remain among the lowest in the nation. OCPS teachers have a contract that recognizes a 37.5 hour work week. The reality is that to effectively fulfill all of the mandated responsibilities of our jobs, <coughs> teachers must work 10, 20, 30, or more unpaid hours a week, every week, all school year. In fact, many teachers would love to get a part-time job to supplement their terrible pay. But we cannot because the part-time job is our teaching job. Every time teachers have to attend professional development trainings, PLCs or other meetings during their planning periods or during the school day, we have to work without pay to make up what we should have been doing. Filling out IEPs, meeting Marzano requirements, contacting parents, answering the email, conducting research, preparing handouts, and fulfilling numerous other mandated duties. Stealing planning time from teachers is wage theft. Administrators have piled on off-the-clock work with defensive statements like, teaching is a calling, and we know as teachers you want what is best for our students. Of course teachers want what is best for our students. We love our students. But that does not mean we want to work for free. I love teaching. Teaching is my passion. However, teaching is not my calling. Teaching is my profession. I am a professional. I did not take a vow of poverty. Every teacher deserves professional treatment and respect. Every teacher deserves to be paid for every hour that they work as long as that work is mandated by their employer and required for their job. This year, the district recommended a new lesson plan template. And some schools, including my own, are mandating that teachers use this plan. It takes many unpaid hours to complete any five-day lesson plan, and many more to complete the other added one. I know my time's running out, so I'm just gonna say, this pile represents the work of 14 teachers and 18.6 unpaid hours for them. You need 15 seconds to wrap up. 16 one. seconds. Okay. The fact is, not only takes, steals money from teachers, it steals time. Time with our families, time with our friends, leisure time that we will never ever get back. 